Today I'm so excited because I will bring you along as we prepare to celebrate Rosh Hashanah as an Orthodox Sephardic Jewish family. We will go beyond dipping the apple in the honey as I will share with you what are the main ceremonies we perform on Rosh Hashanah, our candle lighting, blowing of the shofar, how we prepare the eight special food or simanim and their significance to have a great year, God willing, what special clothes we wear, as well as five things you did not know we do on Rosh Hashanah as a Sephardic Jewish family. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah Monka, and on my channel, I share all facets of my Orthodox Sephardic Jewish life as a full-time working mom with small kiddos. So please don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let me put on a pretty tichel and let's jump into it. Rosh Hashanah comes from the Hebrew Rosh, the head, and Hashanah, which means the year. So Rosh Hashanah means the head of the year or new year. It is a two days holiday celebrated all over the world on the first and second of the Jewish month of Tishrei. This holiday has many names. The most common one is going to be, of course, Rosh Hashanah. The Torah refers to this day as Yom Teruah, or Day of the Shofar Blowing. In our prayers, we often call it Yom Azikaron, or Day of Remembrance, as well as Yom Hadin, Day of Judgment, since this is the day when God recalls all of His creations and determines their faith for the year ahead. However we call it, it is one of the most observed holiday in the Jewish calendar and there is many levels of preparation, spiritual and physical, and we will start by the physical preparation. The first thing I will do is prepare the house and I will start with the letter board. On this very special letter board from the dollar store, I write every week the portion of the Torah that is read on Shabbat and the time of the candle lighting, which is 18 minutes before sunset on Friday and the time of the end of Shabbat on Saturday night. For Rosh Hashanah, I will write the time of the candle lighting, which is again 18 minutes before sunset, and the time of the end of the holiday, which will be close to 50 hours later. Next step, I will prepare the candle lights we will light for the holiday. In our Sephardic family, we use oil to light for Shabbat and for the holidays as our tradition or minag is not to use candles because oil will produce the most beautiful light and with every step to prepare whether for Shabbat or the holidays like Rosh Hashanah, we want to make it as special and beautiful as possible and that also includes using our most beautiful candle holders. For us, it is these silver candle holders but they look a bit dingy and that will bring us to the first thing or special practice we do for Rosh Hashanah as an Orthodox Sephardic Jewish family and that is to shine our candle holders to make this mitzvah of lighting or commandment of lighting even more beautiful. I absolutely love these polishing gloves from Haggerty and I will leave a link for them in the description box below the video. They make shining any pieces of silver so effortless. You simply have to rub the glove on the silver piece and after just a few strokes it does a fantastic job. Look at this difference. While I'm finishing the candle holders, Leah is starting on the Kiddush cup we will use before each meal on Rosh Hashanah and of course we will use our Kiddush cup during the Seder or special meal we will do on both nights of Rosh Hashanah. Once the Kiddush cup and the candle holders are nice and shiny, I put the candle holders back on our lighting tray. Then I take out the silly putty to hold the glass globes on the candle holders as well as the floaters with wicks we use to light our oil. I also take out a few wooden sticks to transfer the light. I prepare a 48 hour candle called a shamash or guardian candle. We use this candle because we cannot create a new fire during any holidays, but we can use an existing flame that was created before the holiday and transfer the flame with a piece of wood we prepared before the holiday. On a side note, our Sephardic custom is to light five lights, whether for Shabbat or any Jewish holidays, like Rosh Hashanah, because we light one light per family member. 
The second thing we will do a bit differently for Rosh Hashanah as Sephardic Orthodox Jews is to set a special table where we incorporate as much white as possible to the tablescape. We use a white tablecloth, of course, and we cover it with our favorite thick plastic that will help us keep our table clean for the holiday. Usually it is one of the children who will set the table on Shabbat or for the holidays, and today it is Leah's turn. On a side note, every child has carte blanche in terms of creativity and they design the table as they wish. Today, Leia is using placemat as a starting point. Then she will add chargers. Our friend Miriam, who is an event planner, told us that to make the most beautiful table, we have to add as many layers and dimensions as possible on the table. Hence the placemats and the chargers, which by the way, are both from the dollar store. We use large plates for the meals and I have already made another video on my complete Rosh Hashanah prep including all the meals I prepare for Rosh Hashanah and I will leave the link above and in the description box below the video so you can watch it after this one. We also use a second smaller plate, not only for the seder or special meals for the first and second night of Rosh Hashanah, but also because this year Rosh Hashanah will fall on Shabbat, we will eat fish. And as you know, we do not mix meat and fish as Orthodox Jews, so we will use two different plates. Leah adds the cutlery, and the same way we do not mix fish and meat in our plate, we also use different utensils for meat and fish. Usually we only use the fork to eat fish, and another fork and knife to eat the meat, and this is why we have two forks and only one knife per playset. Of course, any of our Jewish holidays or Shabbat could not be complete without our special challah board and our now very shiny Kiddush cup. I think Leah did a terrific job to make it so sparkly. She adds our special Kiddush Sefer, where we can find all the different Kiddush we say for Shabbat and all the Jewish holidays. Beside the salt shaker we have on our table for every meal on Shabbat or any Jewish holidays, including Rosh Hashanah, Leah adds our special honey dish to dip the apple and our challah on Rosh Hashanah. Leah adds these fancy glass cups we only use for special occasions because for us they are so meaningful, they each have our initial on it. And here is where I think Leah takes this tablescape to a whole new level for Rosh Hashanah when she creates this white napkin flower design that she puts under every cup. What do you think? Do you think the white flower napkin is a yay or a nay? Let me know in the comments below. Leah will add round challah that are traditionally made on Rosh Hashanah to represent our ongoing desire to have a good year from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Once our table is all set for Rosh Hashanah, we will go to the next step in our preparation for Rosh Hashanah and that is for my husband to prepare his shofar. The shofar is one of the most iconic items of Rosh Hashanah as we use it during our morning prayers of Shachit and Musaf. The shofar is made of a hollow ram's horn, it has two extremities and a curved body. Some are longer, but our tradition is to use these shorter ones. We blow three different sounds in different combinations and the three sounds are called Tekia, Shefarim and Teruah. On Rosh Hashanah, the Baltekia, or the person who will blow the shofar, will do a hundred sounds of the shofar during our morning prayers. Usually, we would hear the shofar on both days, but because this year Rosh Hashanah is during Shabbat and we do not blow the shofar on Shabbat, we will only hear the shofar on the second day. Each shofar has its own sound. For example, here is the sound of the first of our shofar, And here is the sound of the second one. 
Here my husband is doing one combination of 10 sounds of the 100 sounds we will hear during our morning prayers on Rosh Hashanah. Hearing the shofar on Rosh Hashanah is such an extraordinary experience for me personally. It moves me so deeply. I feel it awakens my soul and fills me with awe before God. Next up in our Rosh Hashanah prep is our prayer book. On this day, we use a special prayer book called a marzor. Every holiday has its own prayer book or marzor. The Marzor is unique to a specific Jewish group, whether Ashkenazi, Hasidim, or Sephardic Jews. It includes not only the unique prayers said on that holiday for Shachit, the morning prayer, Musaf, the special additional prayer said on Shabbat and the holidays, as well as Mincha, the afternoon prayer, and Arvit, the night prayer. The Marzor also contains the specific portion of the Torah that will be read as well as the ceremony of Tashlir, which is another thing you most probably did not know we do as Sephardic Orthodox Jews. The word Tashlir means to cast off. It is a very special prayer that is done for us Sephardic Jews on the afternoon of the first day of Rosh Hashanah and our Ashkenazi brothers usually do it on the second day of Rosh Hashanah. To do Tashlir, we go to a body of water, like a park where there is a pond, and we recite our prayer of Tashlir there. The goal of Tashlir is to cast both our sins and the Heavenly Prosecutor into the Heavenly Sea. At the end of the prayer, we shake our clothes and especially we empty our pockets. This is a symbolic act to show we really want to achieve our spiritual goal of shaking sins off from our soul. Now that our marzor is ready, next up are beds. And this is the third thing we do as Orthodox Sephardic Jews that can be perhaps a bit different and that is to change our beddings to white Beddings. White is really the color of the day as white symbolizes goodness, sustenance, and mercy. Therefore, on Rosh Hashanah, it is customary for us to be surrounded by white in order that we may be judged with mercy and merit a happy and prosperous year. As you probably guessed it, some of us also have the custom to wear white clothes on Rosh Hashanah, and that is the fourth thing you will see in our Orthodox Sephardic home for Rosh Hashanah. As we previously mentioned on Shabbat as women, we often wear a different outfit at each meal to symbolize that we are invited at the King of Kings table and we should dress for the occasion. We do the same thing with different white outfits for the four meals of Rosh Hashanah, but because this year Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbat, we will have five different meals on Rosh Hashanah because Shabbat has three meals. And on a regular day of Rosh Hashanah, there are two meals. Some sages say that we dress in white to resemble angels and to be judged favorably like angels. To be honest, being all dressed in white really changes the way I feel, act, move, and speak. It really elevates my mood. Did you ever notice that when you wear certain things, you act differently, instinctively? Let me know in the comments below. Once the house is ready, let's change and go in the kitchen to prepare the eight special symbolic food or simanim we eat at our Seder night. These eight food each symbolizes a different aspect of what we hope for for this new year and of course we have to prepare them and make sure they have no insects in them as eating insects is forbidden by Jewish law. Let's start with the leeks. For the leeks, I will remove the head and the tail of the leeks, where we usually find the most insects. I cut them in two, then I cut them lengthwise until the middle. I separate all the layers and soak them in soapy solution to remove all the insects that could be found in between the layers of the leek. 
While I continue preparing the leeks, let me explain to you why we use leeks on Rosh Hashanah. We eat leeks because in Aramaic, karti means leek and it is similar to the Hebrew word kara or karet, to tear or destroy. We eat leeks in the hope that our internal and external enemies will be torn out so that we can live in peace. While eating the leek, we pray that God decimates the evil forces we created through our sins. Next, the sesame seeds. Nothing more simple. I add the sesame seeds in a small nonstick pan. I add some white sugar and mix nonstop until golden. While I'm preparing the sesame seed, let me tell you why we eat sesame seeds. It is because the word sesame seed is translated to rubia. In the Talmud, it sounds like the word yirbu, the word for increase. So when we eat the sesame seeds, we pray that our merits should increase like rubia. Some Sephardim have the minag or tradition to eat black-eyed peas for the same reason, but in our family, we stick to the sesame seeds. Our third item or siman we take in Rosh Hashanah Seder is some squash or gourd. Here I'm using an acorn squash. I take it because it is so tasty and sweet, but any gourd or squash would do. We use a squash or a gourd in our Rosh Hashanah Seder because the word gourd found in the Talmud is kara, and it sounds both like the word for red, proclaim, and the word for tear. By eating gourds at our Seder, we pray that the decree of our sentence be torn up and may our merits be proclaimed before God. The way I prepare it for the seder is after cutting it in slices, I spray the slices with oil. Here I'm using olive oil. I coat them with sugar, honey, and sprinkle them with cinnamon. Put them on a baking sheet and bake them for 20 minutes at 350 until fork tender. The fourth item or siman we use on Rosh Hashanah in our seder is a pomegranate. My first step is to verify the surface of this fruit to make sure there is no holes that could indicate a worm inside. Then I will open it. I have showed you last year how the fruit merchant opened it. It worked well, but many of you said I should try doing the merchant technique and to avoid the inevitable splash of the pomegranate to do it underwater. And it worked perfectly. While I'm opening my fruit, let me explain to you why we use this amazing fruit in our seder. The pomegranate is used in the Torah to symbolize Jewish mitzvot or commandments and it symbolizes plenty and good fortune. By eating the pomegranate, we express our wish for a year filled with as many merits as a pomegranate has seeds. The fifth food we use in our Rosh Hashanah Seder is the Swiss chard. Because the Swiss chard is infested with insects, even though at first glance the leaf looks clean, when we take a more thorough look, especially when we look on the flip side, we see that in all the small folds and crevices of the Swiss chard leaf, we can find dirt, and inside the dirt we find many, many insects. And this is why we only eat the hard part for Rosh Hashanah. The leafy part will be washed, thoroughly checked, and used at a later time completely blended in a smoothie or a soup. While I prepare the Swiss chard, let me explain why we use this vegetable. Swiss chard is silka in Aramaic, and it relates to the Hebrew word siluk, meaning removal. We use Swiss chard to invoke the blessing that our enemies, haters, and those who wish evil upon us shall be removed. Making it to number six on our list of food we eat on our Rosh Hashanah Seder is the date. Dates are highly infested, so to check them, I cut them in two. Then I will remove the pit. What I'm looking for is white spots that could indicate small eggs or larvae. I also look for black spots that could be insects. While I'm checking the date, let me explain to you why we eat dates at our seder. 
A date in Hebrew is Tamar, and it is similar to Tamu, the root word of Shei Tamu, that means to cease to exist. So when we eat the date, we pray that our enemies should cease to exist. The seventh food we eat at our Rosh Hashanah Seder is the apple. We will dip the apple in the honey, as honey in Hebrew is called dvash, and has a gematria or numerical value that is equivalent to Merciful Father. While we are eating the apple dipped in honey, we pray to our Merciful Father to bless us with a sweet year, from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. The final item we eat at our Rosh Hashanah Seder is the head of a sheep, preferably, or the head of a fish. We eat the head of a sheep or a fish on Rosh Hashanah so that we should be as the head and not like the tail to serve God and to have a good year. I'm curious to know, what was one of the preparation we do for Rosh Hashanah as a Sephardic Orthodox Jewish family that really resonated with you? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for being here. It means the world to me. And know that in my book, you are part of my special blessings I am so thankful for this year and every year. And if you're here until the end, please write in the comments, I love new beginnings. So I know I was not alone. And if nobody told you today, know that you are loved. And you are enough, just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to from it up. Or lay lazy in bed with your head on my chest. I